Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. As you may know by now, I love talking about RVs on this channel. In fact, we've been cutting back lately because it's just so easy to talk about them. But here is a new one. James sent me notes. And Steve, check this out from 12news.com. A couple filed for bankruptcy, never thinking they could wind up homeless as a result. Then the state Supreme Court ruled that their RV does not count as a home, so they cannot protect it in bankruptcy. So houses, houses are protected in Arizona bankruptcy proceedings, and so are mobile homes, which of course are not very mobile. But you're out of luck if your sole residence is an RV. Katie Wilcox wrote this for 12news.com. Uh, the woman in the story here and her husband have been to most of the states in America. She thinks maybe 38 to 40 or so. And they've done all that in a 2017 Tiffin RV, which was uh, the home for them that they bought in 2018. Uh, it was their only residence, a place not just to go on adventures from, but to live in full time, at least until the Arizona Supreme Court decided this February that legally it wasn't their home. Motor homes are vehicles, according to the court. They are not homes. So the legal definition is it is a vehicle, not a home. This is relevant not just for the parties here who filed for bankruptcy in 2022, but it's a massive change in Arizona bankruptcy law. And, of course, that changes how these proceedings work with people who are actually living in motorhomes when they file for bankruptcy. So now this couple have lost their home, and the next person in Arizona who declares bankruptcy while living in an RV likewise could lose their home too. This goes back to the homestead exemption and the idea that you don't lose your home if you go through bankruptcy. So that's the one thing is exempted. The exemption protects the value of a home up to a certain dollar amount from being seized by creditors. In Arizona, we have a very good homestead protection law that protects your residence, said an Arizona consumer bankruptcy attorney who was not part of this case. But when this couple filed their bankruptcy case in Arizona, they claimed two primary assets, a uh, Nissan automobile and a 2017 motorhome, which they said, this is our home. Arizona's homestead exemption protects a house. It also protects a mobile home. So the question in this case is whether or not the motorhome was the same thing as a mobile home, said the Arizona bankruptcy attorney talking to the press here. So this attorney here was directly involved in the case, and he's representing the trustee, which is the entity whose duty it is to dole out a person's assets to their creditors. The trustee just didn't feel that the statute provided for an exemption for a motorhome under the definition of a mobile home. So the 2017 Tiffin might have been their home, but it might not qualify for protections under the homestead exemption. And the state Supreme Court agreed to review the case. The answer for the couple was not good. Arizona Supreme Court issued its decision just a couple months ago. They said, we answer the certified question by holding that a motorhome in which a person over 18 years of age resides does not qualify for the Arizona homestead exemption under the statute. The six to one ruling caused a fundamental shift for consumer advocates. The attorney of the station was talking to here says, I'll say we have filed cases in the past where we protected the motorhomes with the homestead exemption. And in these cases, it's clear these debtors are using their motorhomes as homes. They're not trying to game the system. They live in their motorhome. Prior cases allowed this to be happening, but those cases were not challenged before the state Supreme Court. So what's happening here, I'm going to read between the lines a little bit, but bankruptcy courts quite often are federal. You go file for a federal bankruptcy. And federal courts apply the state law where they're sitting on some issues. Procedure, of course, is federal rules, but I can get heavily into it. But when it comes to applying state law, they're supposed to look at Supreme Court precedent from that state. So I've seen it before where a federal court in Michigan wants to apply state law, but there's been no Supreme Court ruling on it yet. So they will then try to make the question as clear as possible and send that question to the Supreme Court and say, would you please answer this question for us? And they'll let the parties brief it and all that, but it's a certified question. And the state Supreme Court can choose not to answer the certified question, or they can choose to answer it. But when you're asking for assistance 
And it's the federal court deferring to the state Supreme Court saying, we need guidance on your law. Well, state Supreme Courts will often do that. And so here they looked at it and said, oh, we've never looked at this before. Huh, okay. Well, it turns out an RV is not a home pursuant to the statute. And that's the whole point is that there's an Arizona statute on point that defines what your home can be. And apparently an RV does not fit that. So the majority finds that mobile home in the statute plainly refers to a dwelling that is not intended to be moved once placed and physically attached to property. As such, my colleagues conclude the term cannot include a self-propelled motorhome because it is intended to be readily movable and is not tied to the land upon which it sits in any significant way. The roll of the RV doesn't matter. The fact that it rolls does. <laughs> Little plan words there. R-O-L-E and R-O-L-L. So one of the litigants here says, I think they missed the entire point. Just because you live in an RV doesn't mean you're homeless. It just means you're houseless. In the dissent, one judge wrote, this court has consistently found that the purpose of the homestead exemption is to ensure that individuals whose property is subject to foreclosure are not rendered homeless. She added, in other words, whether or not a home has a motor, the homestead exemption fulfills its purpose by protecting families' interests in that home. The majority opinion stated that any changes to the exemption would need to come from the legislature. Arizona has recently passed more protections for people in debt, including a voter initiative, uh, Proposition 209, which passed a couple years ago, that added protections for people in debt in regards to wage garnishments, interest rates on medical debt, and increased bankruptcy protections. Now, it's unclear whether a change to protect motorhomes would have widespread support or may include specifications like a minimum amount of time the vehicle has to be in Arizona, titled and registered in the state. New bills might be introduced in the future, but as of right now, it's too late for this couple. Now, that's the interesting point, is the fact that the motorhome can be moved. So you're in Arizona and you go, I declare bankruptcy. I want to protect my home. It's an RV. Well, is your RV always in Arizona? Or do you occasionally take it out of state? Do you take it on cross-country trips? And you start to see that the distinction of a home seems to not quite fit what the RV does in some settings. Now, I've known people who got an RV and just parked it someplace and lived in it for a while. And that would then start to look a lot like a mobile home, which ironically... They're not very mobile, as we often talk about. So I feel very sorry for these people, and it's unfortunate that they wound up like this, but it appears they wound up in this situation because everybody in this community of bankruptcy lawyers thought that if this push came to shove, it would get ruled as being their home, right? And so I guess the question really is, if this is your home, where do you get your mail? And that's one of the questions. Uh, another one is, uh, are you registered to vote? Where are you registered to vote? And uh, what address appears in your driver's license? Things like that. And those kinds of things aren't all dispositive, meaning that your driver's license doesn't prove once and for all where you live. But those kinds of things do tend to point at where you spend your time and you know where, where you call home. And so, like I said, I feel very sorry for these people. But I, I suspect, like I said, that even the lawyers in this community are shocked because Getting back to what the dissenting judge wrote, the purpose of the statute is to help the people who are owed money, but not render the people, the debtors, homeless. And it would appear by this ruling, they're going to do that. But they're saying, well, if that's the case and you don't like it, go to the legislature and have them amend that section to say it can be a home that's built on a piece of property. It can be a mobile home that's affixed to a piece of property, or it can be an RV that spends a certain amount of time in the state. And then you start getting the proof issues about how long you spend in the state and so on and so forth. But that's another thing altogether. So as of right now, the RV cannot be your home with respect to protections in bankruptcy court in Arizona. Now, I know that <laughs> right now my audience is going, what are the odds that somebody in Steve's audience right now is in Bar Arizona considering bankruptcy, and they live out of an RV. Uh, I, you know, there, there might be a couple people, but it's just such an interesting debate. It's an interesting question. James sent me because he said, Steve, hey, RV's back in the news. Who'd have thunk it? 
So 12news.com covered that. A couple filed for bankruptcy, never thinking they could wind up homeless as a result, but the state Supreme Court ruled that their RV does not count as a home. Katie Wilcox wrote that for 12news.com. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. A plateau is the highest form of flattery.